What's good Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video and this video is going to be a film study. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how long it'll be but basically we're going to break down Alex Leatherwood and we're going to break down every single part of his game. I'm going to just go through the film and I'm going to just share with you guys different plays that I see, things that I like, things that he needs to improve on. Uh, you know, there are going to be reps where he wins, there'll be reps where he loses. Uh, in general, we're going to just look at a ton of plays. And I really wanted to start with this first play because even though the quarterback ends up throwing this ball, you look at uh, Leatherwood here and you look at how he's going to down block this, right? He's going to block and hook this defensive lineman. Um, and then basically, you look at this hole right here. I mean, you look at that hole. And that is because Leatherwood turns his guy. Now, of course, as you guys have already see this, Mac Jones keeps it and he throws it on a run pass option. But the offensive line doesn't know that that this is going to be a pass, right? They're blocking this as it's going to be a run. Leatherwood, great job down blocking on this specific rep. Let's get into the next play. One of the things that Leatherwood will be asked to do in the NFL, especially in Tom Cable's system, is he's going to be asked to basically get to the inside of certain players, right? On backside runs. Here's an example of exactly what I mean. Leatherwood is going to take a couple steps to the inside and just get to the inside of number 90 there. Uh, let's slow this down and, and let's really break this play down. Understanding the running back is running to the left of the screen, which means Leatherwood has a responsibility to cut off number 90. Uh, the point of cutting off number 90 is so the backside lane could be created. All right, you see Leatherwood do a good job cutting off number 90, and that's basically for the running back to maybe squeeze it back right through there and, and be able to break that. Now, obviously, the running back doesn't. The running back's going to just hit this front side, as you guys see. Uh, but Leatherwood does a good job cutting his guy off, right? And, and right there, that's a good feel. Not only does he have his arm, super long arms, and we'll talk about that, man. He, this guy's arms are so lengthy, and he knows how to utilize them. But not only does he get his arm out there to stop this defensive tackle, but he keeps his vision downfield because he knows that, hey, if the running back does possibly cut this back, I'm going to just back up just a little bit. He knows that if the running back cuts this back, maybe I get off a of number 90 and, and maybe I jump in front of somebody else, right? Like this guy here. Either way, Leatherwood does a good job on this specific rep, right? He gets to the inside of number 90. Colton Miller does this and Colton Miller mixes look easy. And I think this play right here shows you why the Raiders wanted Leatherwood. This is why they wanted him over someone like Tevin Jenkins. Um, I've talked about this in the past. Tevin Jenkins is kind of stiff with his hips. Uh, he's a powerful guy, as is Alex Leatherwood. But Tevin Jenkins is not as flexible and as athletic as Alex Leatherwood. And that's a very important concept. With that being stated, let's jump forward, man. And let's get into the next play. Now, one of the big things of playing offensive tackle or, or offensive lineman in just in general, but especially offensive tackle is your in-game mental processing of what the defense is doing is so important. And I say offensive tackle specifically uh, because the, the corner could come off a blitz and you'd have to know to pick him up. The safety could come off the blitz and you'd have to know to pick him up. And this is in the play as the play begins, right? Uh, check this play out. I'll let you guys watch it and then we'll break it down. Uh, watch what Leatherwood has to do in this specific play and look at all the different things that happen. Uh, let's let's slow this down, man, and, and let's watch this in slow motion. Uh, first and foremost, uh, as you guys are going to see, Leatherwood is going to take a couple steps to his left, right? His job is to basically hook that defensive end. And notice how the defensive end is, is, is trying to come back to the inside. Leatherwood sees that and he knows, okay, if this guy's going to go to the inside, I'm going to let him go. And maybe the guard picks him up and then I pick this defensive tackle up. At the same time, so keeping that in mind, right, that's already 1A and 1B in his blocking. He knows that, okay, the guard has this guy already picked up. At that point, there's another guy that, that's coming. Look at this. You have this guy right here coming and this guy would blow this play up. And Leatherwood gets just enough of him. Devonte Smith here blocks down on him as well. That right there is all. That, that's a hundred percent mental in-game processing, and that right there is a beautiful rep, if you ask me. You can watch the same play uh, from the back side. You have Leatherwood right there on the right of your screen playing left tackle. Uh, basically, he's you know he does a great job, man. Like you know, it's a stretch play to your left or outside zone, I should say, to your left. Um, 
two goes to the inside, you help your guard just a little bit, and then you get to that next level. And that is a nice rep right there. Uh, with that, let's jump forward and, and get into the next play. One of the things I really like about Leatherwood is his strength. The second he gets his hands on you, he's going to stop you in your tracks, and chances are you're not going to get anywhere. All right? You see him right there on number three, who is a defensive end does a fantastic job man just getting right on him getting his hands on him and stopping him great play if you ask me now this wouldn't be a, a thorough film study without showing you the reps in which he loses uh, here's one of them and again we're gonna just go through a bunch of different plays and uh, you know this is gonna allow you guys to basically make that judgment on yourself of how you feel uh, this is a fantastic move right there by the right defensive end he's gonna basically chop and rip past leatherwood and here's the thing right leatherwood in my opinion struggles with power more than he struggles with speed and i don't know if if this defensive end number three is is more of a power guy and if he was just giving it to leatherwood as far as like power moves you know rather it's a bull rush or, or one of these power moves um but the quarterback gets hit and and this is one of the things i saw a number of times um, and not necessarily him losing when it comes to like speed moves because this is a spoon speed move right uh, but when it came to stronger football players he kind of struggled a little bit and the thing is is he's stronger than most of these guys right and he's more athletic and I think maybe it's a mental part of his game or maybe it's coaching and I do think Tom Cable will, will get this fixed right uh, but again it's one play uh, for every one of these plays he has five or six really really good reps so um, let's jump forward and, and let's get into the next place and, and discuss it. One of the biggest things of playing offense linemen is mental in-game processing. And, and you will hear that word a number of times in this video. One of the very important things is when defense vents and defense tackles want to run stunts, which offensive linemen refer to it as um, defensive games. Um, basically, you have to be ready for those, right? When number 92 here slants to his right, naturally, 70 is going to assume that 15 is going to come back around him. That's naturally what you think is going to happen. So as number 92 goes to his right, Leatherwood and, and uh, the guard Deontay Brown know that there's a chance number 15 is going to go underneath that. Number 92, for whatever reason, does go to his right, but then he comes back to the inside, and again, in-game processing. Leatherwood has to understand what's actually happening. He has to understand that he's not switching, and he's not picking up 92. Uh, he's going to be picking up number 15, uh, but at the same time, you know, he is ready to pick up number 92, right? Uh, so this is a good rep in the aspect that Leatherwood knows that this could potentially happen, um, and then he just kind of dominates uh, number 15, right? Again, he doesn't really struggle with speed from what I've seen. Uh, but let's jump forward and, and get into the next play. Alrighty, you guys. So at this point of the video, if you guys are still watching this, huge shout out to every single one of you guys. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash that subscribe button if you guys are not subscribers. Um, here's a very great rep if you ask me. And if you guys don't know who this defensive end is, it's Aziz Ajalari from Georgia. He's a potential second round prospect or, or he should be a top 50 prospect coming out of the draft. Um, this is a great rep and, and I want to discuss this. I'll let you guys watch it in its entirety. Um, but I want to slow it down for you guys, man. Uh, obviously, the defense man does swat the ball. That's not Leatherwood's fault, right? That's on the quarterback. Uh, you know, if you're swatting the ball, it's because you were beat, right? That's why you're swatting the ball. Uh, but notice how Leatherwood gets a great kick step he's the uh, he sets up with a 45 degree angle set uh, which is out this way right if if he stepped backwards that would be a a vertical set and it, of course if he steps forward that would be the jump set um he's gonna set up with the 45 degree set um and the benefit of this is you get on that defensive end quickly right if you do a kick step you're giving the defensive end more room to kind of uh, set up their pass rush moves if you do a 45 set it's quicker it's faster and it's just cleaner in general um, but notice what number 13 does number 13 is going to get his left arm as you guys see right there extended and basically he's going to try using his right hand to knock down leatherwood's uh, right arm get him off balance and then he's going to try pulling with his left hand right and watch this slowly watch this carefully 
there's the the initial punch and here's the pull the way you stop that as a tackle is you get your left arm up there to basically balance yourself out and he does this beautifully and by he i mean leatherwood he handles this perfectly and this is just a great rep he stops number 13 in his tracks and again 13 i guess does a good job getting his hand up and just knocking that ball uh, but the rep is beautiful if you ask me it doesn't get better than that number 13's trying to hit leatherwood with his move leatherwood hits him with his move and then you get the counter coming i love offensive line and defensive line play man i love breaking it down i'm a former offensive lineman so uh, this right here is beautiful it's a beautiful rep Let's look at more plays of Leatherwood against this Georgia defensive end because this is one of the best players he played against uh, this season. So let's jump forward and get into the next play. All right, you guys. Uh, of course, you're going to see Leatherwood playing left tackle right about there. There he is. Um, here, here's what you guys have to understand, right? I, I mentioned this just a second ago. In-game processing is such a big part of playing offense tackle. You're going to see that this corner is going to come on a blitz. And basically, although this guy does initially go upfield, he's going to end up just picking this running back up, right? And that's what you guys are about to see here. I'm going to slow, just do this slowly so you guys can kind of see uh, what the tackle has to think about, right? Number 13 here is going upfield. So naturally, that's exactly what Leatherwood's going to do. He's going to mirror number 13. Uh, but what George is trying to do is he's trying to get this corner and sneak him through the inside through that through that uh, uh b gap there um and notice how the defensive end ends up picking up the running back and leatherwood sees that he sees what they're trying to do there and he quickly uh readjusts himself and he picks up that that corner that's coming and i know slowing it down you guys might think okay it's in slow motion that's an easy pickup but watch it in full speed watch how quickly you have to be able to react and pick this up that's not an easy block right there, man. That's such a hard thing to do. Uh, you guys can watch it from, from the uh, end zone angle here. Just look at the way he has to move, man. Look at that right leg of his. Look at how he has to quickly adjust himself to come back to the inside to pick up that faster blitzing corner. And he does a great job picking him up too, right? Again, fantastic, fantastic in-game in mental processing by Alex Leatherwood. Let's jump forward and get into the next play. Again, I, I want to stick with the Georgia tape here just for a second, and then we'll get into the Tennessee, Mississippi, Kentucky, Auburn, LSU, Arkansas, Notre Dame. We'll, we'll get into all the other tapes in, in just a second. Uh, but I want to stick with this, this play here because Leatherwood's going to lose this rep. Uh, and I said it earlier in this video, and I said it in one of my other videos as well. Uh, but Leatherwood struggles with power at times, and that's a losing rep, and this is power. Uh, he's going to lose this uh, block here. And I, I don't know exactly what it is, but when he has to block these stronger, powerful guys one-on-one, -on -one, he tends to struggle a little bit and i'll show you guys more losing reps because there's at least three or four that i know on the top of my head that i've already seen i'm not in this game specifically i haven't finished the georgia game in full i'm actually just watching this live with you guys um but there he is lined up right over that defensive tackle um you know he 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 has good leverage but he ends up just not keeping his head up um you know again he gets off nicely uh, everything about this rep looks good, but his helmet just lands on the wrong side, right? Uh, he should have gotten his helmet to this side, and he should have cut this defensive lineman off, and he doesn't. And the defensive lineman rips through Leatherwood, and Leatherwood doesn't have the recovery to be able to win, and that defensive tackle makes the stop. Uh, they end up losing, I think, one yard on, on this play specifically. Uh, but power, I, I've seen him struggle a couple times. Let's, let's just jump forward and just get into the next rep. Alrighty, you guys, so this play right here is basically one-on-one -on -one with a, a, a top 50 prospect, right? Uh, Aziz will probably be a top 10 pick in the second round. Um, great rep, if you ask me. Let's break this down, man. That right there, that's that's how you stop someone in their tracks. Uh, Aziz tries to, to do this jump, uh, this jump jab and just try to get past him using his speed. That doesn't work, man. Um, again, at this point, when when leatherwood's gonna set up at the 45 degree angle that he does uh, leatherwood has to basically keep his knee his left knee in the crotch of number 13 because 13 can easily come back if if you overstep this and basically leatherwood gets that left hand up there and he hits number 13 right on his right shoulder 
and that's going to slow anything he wants down. And then you got that right arm coming back. And that's just to keep the balance of 13 if 13 tries to do something to the inside. Great initial contact. It doesn't work. 13 tries to, at that point, long arm it. That's not going to work either because your arms are not going to be longer than Alex Leatherwood's arms. Base is beautiful. That's a great rep if you ask me. Um, you know, these are the types of things that I see when I watch him in, in pass protection. And this is why I say he's a better pass protector than he is a run blocker. And when I say that, I'm talking specifically about the Raiders system and the Raiders scheme. I'm not talking about power blocking. I'm not talking about chips and, and all that other crap. I'm talking about Raiders specifically, right? What he's going to look like at right tackle for Tom Cable. Uh, let's jump forward and get into the next play. All right, guys, let's jump forward into this next play, Leatherwood, left tackle. Uh, he's going to lose this rep, and not necessarily lose, but he, in a way he does kind of lose because he, he is off base. Um, you know, the quarterback does get the ball out, so it's, it's not a huge deal. But again, you know, we look at it from the perspective that uh, that's a bad base. Right. I'm not sure if, you know, what he was thinking. You guys got to keep in mind, right? As an offensive lineman, he has he has the responsibility of knowing what to do in every single situation. Um, this is a play action, right? So as you guys are going to see, um, number 10 is going to play action it. So he has the option to basically jump to this defensive end. Um, at the same time, he has the option of, of coming to his left, maybe jumping back just a little bit. It's up to him. All right. He gets to make that decision. And basically, he kind of makes like a indecisive decision where I'm not sure what I'm trying to do. Um, it looks like he initially takes a left step. His base is too wide. Maybe he sees that linebacker or, or corner right there from 32 blitzing. And then he tries to take a right step and he's just too, his base is too wide. That's a bad situation to be in. Um, he tries to use that left hand to slow down that defensive end. The defensive end does a great job. Uh, basically using his hands to just get past him, man. Uh, he rips it, just a slight little rip, and obviously the quarterback gets it out. But does you know that's a losing rep in the NFL? That could get Derek Carr hurt, right? Um, so yeah, that's gonna be something that's gonna have to be coached out of him. Not a huge deal. It is just one losing rep. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of winning reps. Uh, I'm just trying to show you guys plays where he actually does something. Rather, it's him actually making a good block or him losing a block. And I'm not talking about like backside plays where he's not doing anything. I want to show you guys actual plays that are going to have an impact. Right. Uh, so let's jump forward with that and let's get into the very next rep. All right, guys. Um, this might be the best rep that I've seen so far. So if you guys are still watching, let me know that you guys are still watching. Let me know you guys are true fans uh, and you guys are true supporters. So uh, <laughs> this is a fantastic rep, man. Um, as an offensive lineman, it's all about the, the different things you do to win, right? You can punch a guy in the face with both hands, with your right hand, your left hand. You can jump forward. You can jump backwards. You can fork, right? In this situation, he's going to snatch. Look at that right arm, all right? And I think this is the video I posted on Instagram maybe last night or earlier this morning. I don't remember. There's so much crap going on all the time. But you see Leatherwood... When number 10 gets that left hand out there, you see Leatherwood do the one of two things he can do. He can either lift that arm up or he can snatch it down. And when you snatch it down, naturally number 10 is going to fall. All right. And if you watch it in regular speed, you don't really see it. That's why I have to slow it down. Uh, so it's, it's more evident. Um, that left hand, number 10, gets it into Leatherwood's chest. Right arm swat down. Number 10's off balance. Now, here's the thing. I want him to finish this. I want him to jump on the back of number 10 right there and i want him to put him in the dirt and he doesn't do that and that's part of his game that he needs to improve on he needs to get more aggressive he's so athletic he's so powerful at times he plays with good technique at times but he's just not aggressive and that's the one flaw i see with his game and i think that could absolutely improve right it's not like he can't improve this part of his game uh, but let me know what you guys think, man. Do you guys think that's a good rep? Do you guys think he needs to be more aggressive? Let me know in the comments below how you guys feel about Alex Leatherwood. Alrighty, guys. I, I mentioned uh, the defensive end here, uh, number 13, who is not the same from the last play, right? Number The last play was number 10. Uh, this guy right here is a top 40 or 50 prospect. He'll be drafted today. Um, here's a losing rep, right? And we have to show every losing rep because that's, that's what's going to make Leatherwood better. Right, is those losing reps. We need to see why he's losing. In this specific situation, he's just jumping this, right? Like he's setting up perfectly. Great setup. 
um but then at this point he, i think he leans a little bit too much right he's trying to get too forward too forward if you're gonna lean right especially with where leatherwood is um aziz has the outside right leatherwood is too far to the right right what he needed to do is get further to the left especially relative to where the quarterback sets um so what ends up happening is leatherwood is gonna get caught leaning and aziz just pulls him he just gets right past him pulls him downward yanks him and this is it man mac, mac jones could could get hit obviously mac jones just throws the ball away but um that's a losing rep in my opinion uh we want to show every rep it's a good play uh by the defensive end let's jump forward and get into the next play the one thing i really like with leatherwood when it comes to his pass blocking especially is if he sets his base up correctly if he gets his hands and his punch in there correctly he's not gonna lose man he's too powerful he's too strong um as soon as he latches right right there he's latched the second he's latched he mirrors flawlessly man oh I, this one right here pumps me up you know and i know yesterday i wasn't that high when when we initially picked him uh, for the sole reason that i wanted a defensive guy and i still do right and um you know that's not necessarily because i don't like leatherwood especially after i've watched more of his film i see that he can do things that uh, initially I, I didn't really give him credit for right uh when he punches strikes he latches and he mirrors he looks great uh, and i think he's gonna bring that into the nfl all right, you guys, so you have the defensive end playing very, very wide. Um, in this instance, Leatherwood's going to have to vertically set, which you'll see for the first time. The vertical set in the NFL is most typical, uh, especially with teams like the Chiefs. With the Raiders, not so much. Right, We don't have our linemen set vertically as much. Most of the time, they're going to set uh, 45 or they're going to jump it right straight to the defensive end because we run the ball so much. So those are the two sets we do primarily. A uh, first time we're going to see a vertical set from Leatherwood. Um, I mean, it looks good. It, it looks real good. If you ask me, he gets out there. It's, it looks nice. He kick steps it perfectly. Um, the feet look good, man. The feet look real good. He does a good job uh, getting his punch in there. Um, again, this guy has a good, uh good ability to like slow a player down and then like he mirrors them perfectly right gets his hands in there he's established perfectly uh from you know the the half man establishment that you have to do you got to get that left knee uh right to the crotch right in the middle of that defensive guy uh and then at that point you can just use your hands man uh, the game of football is played with your hands you win by using your hands that's how you win as an offensive lineman and leatherwood has real good hands if you ask me all right you guys i want to show you guys this power play um basically this play is going to be number 55 is going to pull he's going to kick out number 13 uh 65 is going to block down here uh, leatherwood should double and then get up to this linebacker and leatherwood does not do that now keep in mind this is a power play the center is probably going to get up to 17 uh 73 should just cut this backside guy off and number four should run right through there and that should be a touchdown right that, that's ideally how you want to run this i uh, watch leatherwood and and just kind of watch what he's going to end up doing and watch how he doesn't get to number 32 right number 32 ultimately is one of the guys that's going to slow this play down and allow it to be made and of course number 13 does a fan freaking fantastic job man uh this is how you take on a, a guard boom get in there get your head in there and then get off the block that is a fantastic by number 13 that pumps me up man that's the kind of shit i like to see from a defensive guy but this isn't aziz al ajari video this is a alex leatherwood video um you know in my opinion i, I don't even think to having to double doesn't even make sense a uh, number 65 should have been able to just take this guy on by himself but at the same time i understand the situation if number 32 is standing there number four should run through him at the same time 87 is kind of coming around um, so maybe 87 picks this up um but if that's the case if, if number four was supposed to squeeze through here and, and get through there um if that was the case then leatherwood and 65 did a bad job they need to move this guy much further um than they actually did they need to move th this guy much quicker and again that is one of the flaws i see with leatherwood right now um he doesn't play physically and that bothers me at the moment i need him to get more physical right but at no point do i have any doubt in my mind that uh, richie incognito and denzel good 
can't give him that that quality, that mindset that you need to go out there and kill someone. You need to go out there and hurt someone. Uh, if anyone can do it, those two guys can help him establish that. Alrighty, guys. So I, I mentioned that Leatherwood kind of struggles with power. Uh, Tennessee is showing this uh, 43 defense, uh, which means that they have this strong defensive end, right? Um, and you're going to see Leatherwood he backside block this, right? He's going to take a, a right step and just kind of get to the inside of this. Beautiful, right? Leatherwood's won his block. Uh, the defensive end, you know, is, just needs to try to squeeze this down. Um, but the thing is, is the defensive end does squeeze this down. And Leatherwood needs to not allow this to happen. You can't allow that guy to push you back so far in that aspect. Now, keeping in mind, this is a run pass option. Um, and I'm looking at it from the unique perspective that for Alex Leatherwood specifically, this would be a run in the NFL, obviously. Um, you need to get to the inside and you need to stop him. This guy should not push you back any further than where you're at. And the part of it is, is look at where he ends up pushing him back. If number 65 was not there to, to stop Leatherwood, I think Leatherwood have, would have ended up somewhere over here. And that can't happen, right? That absolutely cannot happen. Um, so again, get stronger, you know, get that, that NFL strength in you. And again, he's a young football player. He's only going to get stronger. He's only going to get better. But it is something I want to point out to you guys. All right, you guys, I want to jump forward into this next play. Uh, Leatherwood's going to lose a, a block in which he just has the guy right in front of him. Uh, as you're going to see, I mean, this is such a, in my opinion, it's an easy block. Or it should be for any guy who's going to be taken in the first round. Uh, he loses this, man. He loses the block, and that's the guy that ends up making the play. Um, watch it from the backside here. Um, again, that's such a easy down block. Like, you know, it's it's one thing if you need to get to the inside, right? But it's different if, if you need to just stop this guy, you know. Whatever it is that you need to do. You should not miss this block. Like the defensive tack or defensive end, I'm not 100% sure what, what that is. Um, he basically just goes this, dips his shoulder, dips his hips, and he just gets past Leatherwood. And that's a hold in the NFL, in my opinion. Right right there, that's probably called the hold. He does let go uh, pretty quickly, so I don't know if it's 100% would be called the hold. But it is a losing rep, right? You can't deny that he lo ultimately lost that rep. Um, you know, again, you have to be able to stick with it. You have to be able to get your helmet in the correct spot. Uh, you know, people talk about he's a great run blocker. Uh, for the Raiders scheme, I think, sure. I think he has some good zone blocking uh, attributes that uh, will translate into the NFL. But uh, blocks like this where it's just man-to-man -man power, I, I, I've shown too many examples already in which he loses. And I'm sure I'll come across many, many more. Uh, but let's jump forward and get into the next play. All right, you guys, here's another play. Um, technically, he wins at the point of attack, right? He's great off the ball, in my opinion. Uh, but what's going to end up happening is he overplays this just a little bit, and he gets tossed. Uh, his helmet lands on the wrong side. He's off balance, and that guy actually makes the play, right? That's the guy that ends up making the play. Uh, of course, when you have a, a talent like Najee Harris, this play is still a gain of, I think, four-ish yards. Um but, you know, at the end of the day, you have to stick with your guy, right? You have to stick with him and not allow him to, to get off the, the, the ball uh, like you saw in that instance. Um, here's another play. You know, great job there. He's, he kind of just lets his guy go uh, because that's not his responsibility. Uh, he knows that you have a guy that's going to pull. Uh, he's going to just play it down. Uh, there's a guy that might end up coming on the blitz. Good job. Good in-game processing. Uh, let's jump forward and get into the next play. All right, guys. So as it comes to the Raiders, the thing that Leatherwood's going to have to do is he's going to have to backside block this. And he's going to have to get uh, basically to the inside here. Um, and he does a good job doing just that. Perfect example of something he's going to have to do at the next level, especially in our system and our scheme. He has to be able to beat these guys to the inside. And he gets a little bit of help from number 94 who kind of slants right into that guy. Uh, but ultimately, he does get to the inside, and the running back's able to pick up a ton of yards because of Alex Leatherwood's block. Without his block, this is not where it ends up getting. Um, again, he does get a little bit of help from 94, but it's still a nice block. With that, let's jump forward and get into the next play. Alrighty, you guys. Here's another play. Same situation as the last play. Backside blocking. You got to get to the inside. Uh, this is an easier block because uh, the defensive end is out so wide, right? Uh, but again, this is... You know, 
as a Raider, as a Raider film, you know, I watch every single one of the Raiders films at least three or four times, right? Uh, especially offensive line. And this is the typical backside block. If Leatherwood could not make this block, right, if he's not able to turn his hips, get to the inside, stop himself, um, and then pick this guy up, but at the same time, keep his eyes downfield, right? If number seven comes through here and he's going to try blitzing, you you damn near know that number 70 is going to pick him up, right? And he does a good enough job on the backside, gets to the inside, stops number 52, and it gives the running back a, a lane for the backside. Alrighty, guys, uh, we'll jump into this next play. Uh, initially, it does look like Leatherwood loses this, but it, it is not Leatherwood's uh, fault here. But I, I do want to talk about it. Um, you're basically going to get a three-man uh, stunt where basically 52 goes to this gap, 94 goes here, and 6 is going to try coming around. That's a very hard play for the offense line to, to, to pick up, right? Um, because what's happening is, you know, the guard has to not only pass number 94 off to the center, uh, but then the tackle has to pass off 52 to the guard. So it's a hard responsibility for the guard. Um, personally, I also think that because Leatherwood steps so far back, um, it makes it a little bit tougher. He's not able to slow down 52 enough for that guard to get there, right? You, you see that guard trying to turn to 52, right? The guard knows it's his responsibility. Look at his head, look at what he's doing. He's trying to get to that inside and he's not able to. And Leather was just trying to help the guard as much as possible. Uh, either way, it's a, it's a good stunt, right? It's how how you utilize stunts as a defensive coach is is gonna matter, right? Like Paul Gunther did it every single play, and it didn't work out for the Raiders. Gus Bradley does it once every seven eight plays, and that's that is when stunts work. When you do them once every seven or eight plays, you don't want the offense lineman to prepare for it. You want to just hit them with it, right? Um, again, you know, this is part of the mental in-game processing. I would say that's a little bit more on the guard not being quick enough. Um, but with that, let's jump forward, man. And let's just get into the next play. Alrighty, guys. If you watch Leatherwood here and you watch him block, initially, he does a pretty good job as far as, like, pushing number 52 back. Uh, but one of the things I don't like is kind of how his hands wrap around 52, as you see right there. Um, I don't like that because to me, you know, if number 52 was smart enough to like try to spin or, or try to jump to the inside or to the outside, chances are Leatherwood's going to get called for a hold, right? Even though after initially hugging him and getting his hands around 52, he does readjust his hands to the shoulder pads and then he just kind of controls 52 and just kind of pushes him back a little bit. Um, but again, that's, in my opinion, not a good way to block, right? That's not good technique from a run blocking perspective. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, so far, if, if I had to just give you guys my thoughts and opinions, I'm going to just let the video go. Um, I'm not going to get into a specific play. I'm going to just let it run in order for a second. Um, and I want to just give you guys my thoughts real quickly, and then we'll get into the next couple of plays as well afterwards. But, uh, so far, the things that I see with Leatherwood is he has good technique. If it comes to speed specifically, he can handle speed pretty well. Um, if it comes to power, he struggles a little bit, but at the same time, he, he can do a good job, especially in pass protection. Uh, against the run, if he has to zone block on the backside or front side, I think he's pretty good. When it comes to power blocking, he struggles a little bit, right? But that's okay because in our scheme specifically, he might not have to do that as much. Um, but at the same time, when he run blocks, I see some technique issues, right? Like... You know, again, he's wrapping a guy up, right? And, and specifically with defensive linemen. I'm seeing him like his hands aren't landing in the correct spots. His helmet's not landing in the correct spot. Uh, and there are things that are fixable. But at the same time, you know, Alabama's coaching staff is, is trying to teach these guys how to block correctly. Like he has to have been told where his, his hands need to land, where everything needs to land. Um, at this point, it's just up to him to basically do it. Um, and I say that he struggles when it comes to like the initial point of contact with defensive linemen because when it comes to linebackers when it comes to uh, the second level he does a good job like he can control linebackers and, and those type of people pretty well but it's really that front you know that front defensive line uh, when it comes specifically to um one blocking right i don't like where his helmet lands i don't like where his hands land uh, those are things that could get corrected um, and at the same time, right, like we'll really see where he ends up with the Raiders because he's going to have to develop. He's not a perfect prospect, 
but at the same time he's definitely better than colton miller today right if i had to say is he better than colton today when colton was a rookie all right let me clarify that i think he is i think he is better today and i i think he's different than colton uh you know tyrone smith is the comp that i have of alex leatherwood um, you know, again, I want to jump forward, man, and, and I want to show you guys a couple more plays. I don't want to end the video yet, even though it's, it's a, been a pretty long video already. Uh, let's jump forward, man, and let's, let's get into the next play. All right, guys, here, so here's another block he's going to have to do in the NFL. Uh, here, this is a play against Kentucky from the 2020 tape. Um, you're going to see that basically he's going to get up to the second level. Um, mental and game processing is a big part of playing football, and basically he's going to take steps with the, the left guard here. They're both 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 they're both basically gonna take steps to their left. All 70 has to do is slow down that guy enough that number 65, Deontay Brown, can then just turn his hips and, and basically shut that guy down. Um, and then he basically gets to the next level. Linebacker, one of my favorite linebackers, I think that's Jamin Davis. Um, he's gonna just get off there, man, and and boom, stop him. Just give him enough of a push where that's all that's needed. And the running back's able to get to the outside. Um, again, Deontay Brown doesn't do a good enough job, in my opinion. Uh, you know, Leatherwood gives him all he needs for him to make this block, and that's just bad job on the left guard. And I'm not big on Deontay Brown. He, I, I give him like a fourth or fifth round grade. Uh, he is a power blocking guy, which is different than what Leatherwood is, and I understand that this is more of a zone scheme. This is what Leatherwood is built for, right? Getting his hand on on one guy, getting up to the next level. Great block, great NFL style block, in my opinion. It's that word again, you guys, uh, mentor in-game processing. Uh, he's going to see the game by the defensive line here. And, you know, he gets his hands on, on that defensive end, uh, passes him off, and then basically is going to help the center and basically just, just stop number 95, who uh, I like this guy. I'm pretty sure he's, he's coming out in the draft this year. Um, I, I don't know the name of him on the top of my head, but I do like him. I, I think he's going to be a good nose in the NFL. Um, but yeah, that, that's a good play right there to pass off the defensive end. Great, great, great block here by number 70. Um, basically, he's going to just get on 13, who is that defensive end to the left of the screen, and then just drives him, drives him, and that's a good block. Easy block, right? Typical NFL. Just a, uh, It's a front side block, but uh, this is a, a trap play, so tackles don't really matter as much on, on these trap plays. Uh, but that's a good play. Not only does he take that right step to try to make that defensive tackle think he's going to block him down and possibly slow him down. Um, that's part of the trap, right? So I don't see the Raiders running this play that often, but you never know, right? Maybe with Leatherwood and, and Denzel Good and Richie, we run this play more often. Um, but again, he gets up to that guy. Once he gets his hands on him at that point, it's, you know, the stronger guy is going to win. And uh, think about this, man. As soon as he makes this contact right about here, these two guys could either go this way or they can go that way. It's one way or the other. And from this point on, you make the de determination of which way they kind of went. From the second they made contact, I think they went towards the left of the screen. You guys let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Here's the LSU tape. You're going to see uh, Leatherwood playing left tackle. Uh, he just gets his hands right there, right on the defensive end. He slows him down just enough. Uh, that's a speed guy number three. Um, you guys can watch this from the back side. Again, speed. I don't see Leatherwood struggling with it, man. You get that left hand in there to slow him down. Number three throws that chop. And that's okay, man. You got the right hand to, to, to kind of push him out of the way. And then that's it, man. You just let him go upfield. You just keep a nice base. That's a good freaking rep man as a former offense lineman this shit right here pumps me up man that technique and it's crazy because there are people who say to me and have commented to me saying that his pass blocking is better than his run blocking and i don't see how you can say that i've watched enough of his plays where he, there's no way he's a better run blocker than a pass blocker there's just no way his his men the mental part of, of, of run blocking versus the mental part of pass blocking uh, yeah, he is a strong football player, and that would help him uh, when it comes to blocking in the run game, right? If he gets his hands on you, he's going to drive you, and I understand that, but that's with any strong football player, and that right there, that's a, oh my goodness, that's a block right there. You look at him, get to the next level on number 18, um, that right there, oh my goodness, you look at that right there, look at that block. 
look at that block that's how you stay on a block and that's how you push back i believe that's a linebacker don't quote me on that uh, it damn sure looks like a linebacker in my opinion but that's a nice freaking block right there if you ask me so you know i do think leatherwood is a very a fluid football player he's athletic he has good hips he can run downfield um, and, and that's what I've been saying, right? Even with that last play uh, with, with number 18, um, that's a linebacker. So when he gets to that linebacker level, he can dominate linebackers, right? But then when it comes to defensive linemen, I, I'm not, I don't like how he kind of takes on defensive linemen in certain parts of, of, of blocking, right? Like uh, certain sets, certain things I don't necessarily like, uh, but he is powerful, man. You look at him throwing number three right here. That is a powerful football player, man. Uh, Tyrone Smith is my comp of Alex Leatherwood. I want to know what you guys think, man. Who is your guys' comp of, of Leatherwood? You know, is there a player you guys like? Is there a player uh, you guys would have taken over him? You know, I, again, I, I was a huge fan of Tevin Jenkins. I love how Tevin Jenkins plays aggressive. At the same time, I love Christian Derisol's technique. Uh, but after watching Alex Leatherwood and really getting into his film... Um, I think he might have the most actual potential among all of those players. Alex Leatherwood has potential, and his potential might be the highest right after Panay Sewell. Like, honestly, he's 6'5", he's big, he's strong. He already plays the game of football at a very high level, and he's already done it against great competition. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button smash that subscribe button i really appreciate every single one of you guys especially if you watched it all the way through because that shit just means a ton to me man um and of course you know you guys see a, a great play right there as well of, of leatherwood just dominating so that's a great play to end this video man uh thumbs up appreciate every single one of you guys um the quarterback throws it and puts his hands up right away too uh <laughs> that's an interesting play right there uh, great blocks but i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys next time literally real soon with the live video peace out